Welcome to the third and final video on the frame and square rafter tables. In this video, we'll investigate lines five and six on side cuts of rafters. We'll be using our same four and 12 pitch hip roof we're under the four inch mark on the framing square. In this video, we must match the numbers 11 and 3 eighths and 11 and 11 sixteenths. Side cut of jacks use 11 and 3 eighths inches. I've underlined use because we'll actually be using a, at least a, a virtual version of the framing square in order to reproduce this number 11 and 3 eighths inches. Here's a top view or plan view representation of our hip roof again. And we're using a four in 12 pitch. And that is for any rafter like this hip jack rafter that has a 90 degree angle to the ridge board or the, the plate. It's going to have a four and 12 pitch. We've been looking at these rafters as one dimensional lines. And now I'm actually going to add another dimension while still staying in plan view. I'm going to draw this hip rafter as uh, fat as I can make it without looking too unrealistic. I'm gonna draw my hip jack rafter in two dimensions also. Draw this dotted line to represent the uh, line parallel to the ridge board. And the hip rafter has this property that it's at a 45 degree angle to that line. Now let's take a look at the hip jack rafter. This is the first time where we don't have a square cut. The dotted line represents the cut that would have been a square cut. And that gives us this triangle. Here we also have a 45 degree angle. You might be asking yourself, why isn't the angle just 45 degrees? Why not just set the bevel of the skill saw to 45 degrees and make your cut? Turns out that's what's often done, but that's not the angle that's gonna give you the tightest fit. The reason that the best angle is not 45 degrees is because this representation is a two dimensional representation of a three dimensional world. And there's something that's left out here. Let's take our eye and look at the side of this rafter. I'm looking at the right side of this rafter. Here's the plumb cut line. Now this plumb line is perpendicular, there's a 90 degree angle, to the, the level line that we would have say looked down on to create this plan view. Let's look for this line right here, or at least what we're perceiving as this line in this picture. Well, if this is the top view, I see the long point, the long side here, so that the short point is hidden. And I'm going to go ahead and represent it with this dotted line here. This part of the rafter is what I perceive to be this line right here. Let's analyze this triangle for a second. The width of our lumber is 1.5 inches. It's kind of strange to use the word rise and run because we're on a horizontal plane, but I'm going to say 1.5 inches of run is the same as 1.5 inches of rise when you have a 45 degree angle. So what I perceived here was 1.5 inches. I can transfer this line down to make a triangle that's 1.5 inches. Now, how long is this piece of the rafter? Well, we're gonna use the same technique we used in the last video. There's 12.65 inches of common rafter per foot of run. How many feet of run are there in 1.5 inches? 1.5 divided by 12 feet of run and that gives us approximately 1.58 inches of common rafter. What I perceive to be 1.5 inches in plan view is actually 1.58 inches. And if I wanna get this side of the triangle, I could either use the Pythagorean theorem, this relationship that a squared plus b squared equals c squared, or I can just use the definition of the, the pitch of the roof. So I have 1.5 inches times a slope of four over 12, and that's gonna give us half an inch. I've analyzed these two triangles in 2D the next step is to take this information into three dimensions and find out what this angle really is. I've drawn a representation of this hip jack rafter in three dimensions, and now I'm gonna transfer what we learned in these two dimensional cuts to this three dimensional image. This line right here was perpendicular to the, the plumb line. This point right here was projected over from the short point, and it was uh, at a right angle to hip jack rafter. This level line, perpendicular to the plumb line, must intersect at this point. Okay, so we are transferring over the values, 1.5 inches, half an inch rise. And the length of the rafter is 1.58 inches. We know that the thickness of the rafter is 1.5 inches. And that's all we need from those two triangles. Go back in time, let's pretend like the piece of wood has not been cut yet. And we're gonna use the framing square to draw this line. We're kind of working in reverse here. Our instructions tell us to put the 12 inch mark right here. The instructions also tell us to put 11 and 3 eighths inches right here, but that's the number that we're trying to derive. So I'm gonna use a letter, the letter X, to represent that number, and we're gonna to try to find out what X is. You can see the, the formation of a triangle here, triangle one, triangle two, and you have to think that these two triangles have to be related. I mean, this framing square that created this triangle is also creating this triangle. If we can show that the angles in this triangle are the same as the angles in this triangle, 
then we have triangles that are scale models of each other. And we can use that relationship to get the unknown side. One thing, this, these two triangles are about the same size, but this is supposed to be 12 inches. So th this is not drawn to scale. This is a much smaller triangle. I'm gonna work with the angle, so I need to give at least one angle a name. And I'm gonna use Greek letters, that's typically done. Well, I'm gonna use the, the letter theta. Right here we have two intersecting lines, and those intersecting lines create angles known as verticals. Well, verticals are the same. The measure of those angles are the same. So this angle right here is theta. Since this line is perpendicular to the rafter, these two angles must add up to 90 degrees. They're complementary angles. If this is theta, this must be 90 minus theta. In a triangle, all three angles have to add up to 180. 90, 90 minus theta, theta. You can do the same thing here. Theta, 90 degrees, 90 minus theta. Now it's time to line up these two triangles. We have a bigger triangle and a smaller triangle. They both have the same angle, so I need to line them up the same way. Okay, between the right angle and the theta angle, we have a side of 12. The other side is unknown. In the smaller triangle, between the 90 degree angle and theta, we have a side of 1.58 inches. Then the remaining side is 1.5 inches. We say that these triangles are similar. This is the symbol for similarity. And what we need to do is find out how much larger this triangle is than this triangle. I use division to do that. 12 divided by 1.58. This triangle is about 7.6 times larger than this triangle. That means that this side has to be 7.6 times larger than this side. I'm gonna multiply 1.5 times 7.6, and that gives me 11.4. So right there, this would be 11.4 inches, but we're told to use 11 and 3 eighths inches. So I'm gonna use this fancy function to convert 11.4 to the nearest 16th of an inch. And you see that it is 11 and 3 eighths inches. And we've recovered our number. But that still doesn't tell us what the best angle to use on the skill saw is. So let's talk about that for a second. Even though this gets a little more advanced and we have to use some trigonometry, think about your skill saw, think about the bevel. If your bevel is set to zero degrees, you actually cut this 90 degree line to the rafter. And as you increase the angle, well, the line's gonna go this way, right? So instead of theta, the angle that we actually want is 90 minus theta. That's gonna tell us what setting to put on the skill saw. In order to get theta, we need to use this ratio called the tangent. And the tangent of an angle, like theta, is defined as the length of the opposite edge or side, I should say, divided by the adjacent. And it, well, there's only, there's, there's opposite, there's hypotenuse, and then there's this other side we call adjacent. So the tangent of the angle is equal to this ratio. And in order to get theta back, I need to undo tangent. So the way I would say this is theta, if tangent of theta is equal to 11.4 divided by 12, theta is equal to what's called the arc tangent, abbreviated arc tan, of the ratio 11.4 divided by 12. And maybe you don't have a fancy calculator uh, to do this, but you probably have access to Google. And what you can put in Google is arc tan of 11.4 divided by 12 in degrees. Google should return 43.53 degrees, and that's for theta. We just said that our skill saw is actually 90 minus theta. So 90 minus 43.53 is 46.47. And this is the, the degree mark. If you could get that kind of resolution on your skill saw, uh, you'd actually want a, a 46 and a half degree angle to make the hip rafter, sorry, the hip jack rafter fit as, as tightly as possible onto the hip rafter. The last line tells us side cut of hip or valley use 11 and 11 16 inches. This problem is gonna be almost identical to the one right before it. Instead of looking at the hip jack rafter, we're actually gonna look at the hip rafter and where it hits the ridge board. I'm gonna make the uh, ridge board as fat as I can without making it look weird. And the hip rafter that's coming into the ridge board at 45 degrees, it's gotta hit it somehow, somewhere, and there are different ways to make this happen. But when it does hit it, it's gonna create another situation where you're not gonna be able to make a square cut. So here's the square cut is represented by the dotted line. And you see there's this triangle that should look pretty similar. If the width of our hip rafter is 1.5 inches, then as this is a 45 degree angle, 1.5 inches this way is also gonna be 1.5 inches this way. 
forgive the discontinuity. I did a little bit of work and erased it. Uh, so I'm, I'm gonna leave some of the work here and just build off those drawings later. This 1.5 inches, it is a run across this horizontal plane, but it's not common run because it's not perpendicular to the ridge board. So it's gonna be a, a little harder. Let's still take a look at it from the side view and it's gonna look the, pretty much the same as it did before in the case of the hip jack rafter. So we're gonna see this level line here, which has a right angle to the plumb line. And this is what we perceive to be 1.5 inches, this line right here. Okay, so this is 1.5 inches still. I'm not gonna go ahead and, and get this directly because it is a little more complicated, but we know how to get this side because we studied the pitch or the slope of hip rafters in our first video. So instead of having a four and 12 pitch, a hip rafter is gonna have a four and 16.97, often rounded up to four and 17. If I can find out how big this side is by multiplying 1.5 inches times four over 16.97. Again, I like to keep the 0.97 just to remind you that we got this from a, a square root and it's not a magic number. 1.5 times four divided by 16.97, and that gives us 0.35 inches of vertical rise. And to find this last side, the hypotenuse, we're gonna go ahead and use the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So to get c, I take the square root of 0.35 times 0.35 or 0.35 squared plus 1.5 times 1.5 or 1.5 squared. And that gives us square root of 2.37, which is 1.54. So pretty close to before, but a little different. And now you can see I already have the, the outline of this 3D shape drawn. It's gonna look the same as it did before. The numbers are gonna be slightly different. The thickness of the hip rafter is still gonna be 1.5 inches. This line we perceived to be 1.5 inches, that's still 1.5. Our rise is 0.35 inches. And we just computed that the actual length of the hip rafter is 1.54 inches. Now we put the framing square on just like we did before. We can line up these triangles. So if I, if I do that, um, here I have 12 is still between the 90 degree angle and theta. And then we have X as our uh, other side that we don't know. 1.54 is the smaller triangle side between the 90 degree angle and theta. 1.5 is the other side. So now to find out how much bigger this triangle is than this triangle, 12 divided by 1.4 Five, four. So this triangle is 7.79, the triangle on the left is 7.79 times bigger than the one on the right. That means that this side is 7.7 times bigger than the 1.5 side. So I'm gonna say 1.5 times 7.79 is equal to 11.685. Go ahead and turn that into the nearest 16th of an inch. And you see that we've recovered our 11 and 11 16ths of an inch. That's what you would put on the framing square. And if you want to find out what the angle is, so remember the skill saw is going to be set to 90 minus theta. To find theta, we're going to say, we go into Google like before and say the arc tangent, arc tan of opposite 11.685 11 divided by adjacent 12 in, just keep typing, uh, degrees. And that's going to give you theta, right? And then you say 90 minus theta. I hope you enjoyed these videos on the frame and square rafter tables. Again, my name is Ben O'Gork. I'm an amateur carpenter. I hope that the math alone was interesting to you and that you have some better understanding of the geometry behind the roof rafter calculations. Keep learning and be safe out there.